Hey guys, uh, today we are going to talk about how leadership will shape your life. Uh, so this is a channel, Living Life Coaches, and we talked about health, wealth, and relationship. There are three core concepts of life. And uh, today's topic is focused on leadership. So how leadership, uh, you know, will play a role in shaping your life uh, of, you know, it could be on uh, at home or at work or friends. Uh, with friends and you know it could be anywhere so but but it plays an important role and today we are going to talk about all these uh, different five different points and uh, Randy on the other side is going to start with that with the first one now yeah absolutely when you 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 got a very good start very good opening to our whole discussion today leadership can be at any place we all need leadership at various stages in our lives, it could be like you rightly said, it could even be at your own home. You know, sometimes you could be living by yourself and you could be your leader, right? Because you you, you don't have anyone else to uh, uh, fall back on. So you could be your own leader at some point. And if you're living with a family, you could be the, the leader of the household or your significant other could be the leader of some... Situations that you have to make a decision who takes the lead role, you know, sometimes you have to be the leader in those situations and Famously the, the famous example is the leadership at work in the corporate world with leadership in a sporting team leadership in a musical band You know, you, we all need leadership um, At some point uh, in our lives. So the first one, what are the five? What are the five qualities? What are the five qualities that that uh, that you see in a great leader who would be able to shape up the relationship, the great atmosphere within the team and between team members, and in that in in that uh, in that uh, category, whether it could be a corporate uh, team or a band or a sporting team or even your own house. So one of the main things that I have seen through my experience, we've all seen this: defending the team. If your leader defends you. As you, as a team member, that's when you build confidence in your leader. That's how you motivate yourself to do more, do better. And we've all gone through this. We've seen enough leaders who don't defend you, and enough leaders who actually defended you. And have you guys uh, felt? How you guys felt when your leader defended you? I got some great examples. Venkat, uh, Venkat is gonna put those YouTube video clips after the uh, after our session today. My famous example. I don't know how familiar you are with the sport, the game cricket. I'm, I'm originally from Sri Lanka, so this cricket captain, he's the um, his name is Arjuna Ranatunga, and um, he's the World Cup winning 1996 World Cup winning captain of the Sri Lankan team but I'm not going to talk about his leadership in that World Cup no that's a different whole different story but the YouTube clip that you're going to see down below is is going to show you how he defended one of his team members at the most critical stage of that particular um, team member's life long story short this guy the guy who this captain defended uh, had a very unorthodox uh, bowling action. Again, you might not be familiar with this uh, uh, terminology, but you know you, you can. I, I hope you you'll be able to follow. But you you'll be able to get the the gist of it. And you in in cricket when you're bowling, it's called bowling. Uh, in in baseball, you you're throwing, but in cricket you call bowling. You cannot bend your uh, elbow. But this guy was called by the umpires. Uh, 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 Australian umpires for throwing it's called chucking and that could have easily ended this great guy's career but look at the video and see how he leader defended this bowler and guess what here's the best part Vincent. here's the best part are you are you guys ready for this he became the world still he's the world record holder for capturing the most number of wickets in the history of this game this game is uh, closer to, it started in 1876, if I remember. So it's close to 150 years. And in the history of 150 years of history, he's he holds the world record for most number of wickets. You'll be able to, you might, again, you might not be familiar with this terminology. I can help you with that. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free. You know, I've, I've been in this uh, with this sport since I was 10. So you have any questions about the game of cricket, let me know. But... I think if you look at the video, you will see how, to what extent this leader uh, 
went to defend his bowler and how it shaped this bowler's life, the bowler's career. One of the highest paid uh, cricketers in Sri Lanka, one of the most respected cricketers in the, in the world and the record holder of many. He holds many records. But if, he, if his leader did not defend at the very critical stage of his career in 1999, this happened in 1999, he was beginning to build his career, he would have been nowhere by now. So take that as an example, like how, how he feels about his leader, how this team got together after that, and how this team after that uh, achieved the heights uh, of the game. Um, and that's my famous example I can take from the outside world. So the YouTube clip will uh, show that to you. And that's, but that has to come with the personality. You know, the leader has to have that personality, has to have that courage to go to the extent that he doesn't even know what the consequences are. He could, and actually he was, he was, he was banned for six games and he could have, uh, uh, the leader, the, the captain of the team got banned, but he even took that challenge. That's the important part. When he took, mm. he put his career in line for his team. And isn't that what we want? I mean, not necessarily in a putting someone's career in line, but what do you, how do you feel? I mean, if you're at corporate, well, if you're in a team, uh, in the corporate world, if you know that your leader is going to defend yourself to the extent that he's going to put his career in line, how do you feel about it? Do you feel like leaving that place or you, you feel like, um, you know, sticking with him? And I think you got the answer. And uh, that's one of the most important things, you know, to, to defend the team at the very critical stage of uh, of someone's uh, of, of, a, of a particular project of it. It, so this example is from the sporting world, but you can adapt it to where you are in this world. So it could be a corporate, it could be a, a, a band, if you, it could be a sporting team, it could even be your own household. See how it affects your team and see that how the atmosphere changes and see the heights that you, you can achieve um, uh, with that confidence. We all have experiences, again, you know, we've both been in the corporate world and I've had situations where I had to work with my peer. Uh, we were not the hottest communicators, me and my colleague, but we always knew, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about, Venkat, because you know about my favorite manager. I'm not gonna say his name because he's someone who who likes to stay behind the scene. He doesn't wanna be uh, you know, talked about in, in the public or in the internet. Um, in in our in our discussions in our senior meeting discussions he always said randy and my uh, he, he he goes with he tells the other uh, my other peer lead to i will i will defend you you make the call you make the decision and i'll back you up imagine how it feels us again me and my uh, buddy me and my uh, co co lead we were not the hottest communicators but we managed that team that team Without even sometimes looking at eye to eye, we managed that team really well in, in, in within the two year period because we knew our leader was going to defend us. It was a very new team, and we were going nowhere at the start. But because we knew that the backing was there, we were able to make our own decisions. That's how you create other leaders. Leaders create leaders. Leaders are not bosses. Leaders are not necessarily, I don't like to call them managers. Leaders are supposed to build leadership. How do you do that? One of the main things is defending the team. Um, so we can talk about, uh, uh, unless we have anything to add to it, we can uh, move on no, to the I second. I one thing on that, uh, like that's a great example, real world example. Yeah. Uh, but I remember somebody was, there is a quote from a famous first person, right? If your team is failing, right? Yeah. Take the responsibility as Absolutely. a leader. Absolutely. And yeah. if your team being successful, tell them that it's because of your team. The, right? There you go. Uh, That's a, that. Thank you so much for reminding that. When I have seen like many successful uh, people have done it. Uh, and again, I'm I'm so dear to the sport, uh, the, the game of uh, game of cricket. So I, ha I have so many examples from that. But if you're familiar with any other sports, any other political leaders. Or any any corporate leaders you've seen you've heard that thing before um, that you know if 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 a project if a particular project fails leader takes the responsibility but if the, if it if it was successful you go to the press you talk about it and you get the accolades 
you get the uh, uh, appreciation. Exactly. Absolutely spot on. Yes. Right. Yeah, that's um, all I have. Yeah, let's move yeah, on to the next one. <laughs> thank you so much for uh, reminding. And, and again, I wanted to tell you guys, uh, I think I should have said this before. These things, you already know these things. Most of the things that we talk, you already know. But we are just sometimes, I, we wanted to be reminder service. We get we get caught up with day to the things, so we don't really we don't take time to think about these things and and put it into uh, put it into practice. So take these you already know about these things, but take it to heart. If you I actually really like if you take these things down and remind yourself, take it to your work, take it to wherever you work. It could be again, it could be the ground, it could be the corporate office that you go to. Take these five points. I know, you know, we are not, we are, we are not Tony Robbins or you know whatever, but they they all talk about these things too, in a different way, right? Probably uh, these are these are the basic things that we don't take time to think. So take this as a reminder service from us. Um, that's what uh, that's what we wanted to share. Second point, I, li- I I'd like to take it. Appreciate the good work right then and there. Again, we all get caught up with things. Leaders know this thing was done by this person. This is a great job. Um, we were able to do this because of the work or hard work put in by this particular person. But sometimes we've seen, even both of us have seen in our experiences, does the leadership take enough time to appreciate that work? We've seen the bad side. We have, we've we seen the good side. I'll take an example from my current workplace. I mean, I'm... I'm learning a lot um, from my current uh, leader, but the most important thing that I see in my leader, uh, my leadership now is taking time to appreciate. It doesn't mean just the work. Towards the end of the year, we had Thanksgiving, we had Christmas. Um, last year, when the, the 2018, I was only four months into my role. I did only little uh, for the success of the team, but she engraved a pen with my name and my designation and with a small thank you card. Goes a long way. Mm-hmm. Feel that, feel it. You feel it. You feel like you're desired. You feel like your work is appreciated. And this year, I had a whole 12 month to perform. I got. I actually should have taken that uh, that that gift to, to show you. Um, she gave me two books. Um, and she consulted her two of the most respected mentors of hers uh, for the for the for the for the best book to give give to me as the Christmas gift. And with her with her on the first page, she wrote uh, certain things that really very near and dear to me. And do you feel like if you're a leader, I'm not going to brag about myself, but apply it to yourself. If you're a leader in your organization or if you're set up, when I say set up, it could be a band, it could be a sporting, whatever you're involved with. Imagine if your leadership does something like this. How do you feel? How do you feel about the atmosphere? How do you feel about if you had any thoughts of leaving that place? Would you have the same same thoughts anymore? When when you're given a particular um, gift, engraved, your, your name is engraved, or you're given a gift with a very nice thank you card and, you know, the work you've done, appreciate the work you do. How do you feel about leaving that com- uh, company? Do you feel like leaving or you fe- do you feel like staying? Again, guys, these things we all know. I know that. We know that. But take this to your heart. We don't take time to think about these basic things, these little things. Take this to heart. If you're a leader at a particular place and if you're the employee, you can do this both ways. You can. Uh, I, I'm going to talk about that in a little while. This doesn't have this doesn't have to come from just the leader. If you're a, a person who's reporting up to someone, if you don't have the leadership role, we will talk about how you how you're going to affect your leader with these some of these qualities. So it's about um, and also sometimes I uh, I got text messages from my lead leadership. Great job today, Randy. Uh, great little just sometimes I'm like, why is he even saying that? You know, I did not do a the big deal, and I mean, it, it wasn't a it wasn't a big thing that I did. But still, she took the time to appreciate that it goes a long way. So make sure you appreciate little things. Something I learned through my uh, Taekwondo master, I always talk about him, Master Harris. Take time to appreciate little things; it goes a long way. So that's number two. 
Um, I just want to from... add a quick thing on that. Like, yeah. You know, te your team is like your investment, right? It's basically you are so, like if you think about if you your team is doing something and the, at the end of the day it's like you are the one getting most of the credit, but it's your team also gets some of them uh, in the behind the scene, right? Yeah. But but it's basically return on investment. Like if you are doing these small things that Randy talked about, it's going to improve. Uh, you know, your return on investment is going to be so high. Everybody is so so positive, right? With yeah. the positive enforcement uh, going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. So it's, that's how I see it. And not many leader leader actually do these, right? And uh, you're spot on when can we talk about relate not really our our three components living life coaches are really. really health, wealth, and relationships. So this one includes, uh, I mean, it sounds like it's just relationship, but like you said, return on investment, uh, you know, you have positive energetic employees and how it affects your profitability, how it affects the investment. Investment, not just in terms of money, but investment in terms of happiness, in investment in terms of the energy in that right? atmosphere. Yeah, improves. absolutely. Right. And, and I, I like to take a quote from, I think this is from uh, Richard Branson, employees come first. If you take care of employees, they will take care of clients. I love it right, because yeah. we always think that um, customers come first and this and that always customer. But you ha have you ever thought of taking care of your employees because they are the ones who actually take care of uh, the clients, not necessarily the higher up, the, the top person in the hierarchy. Um, in this company so take care of your employees first and because they feel good about it and then they will treat the same way that they're being treated um, so that's number two from us number three is personal attention I love this too you will hear you, you will hear this from me every time I pick up a point because I, I, I love each of these points uh, you know to a great deal personal attention the best de leadership uh, best leaders are always talking about the Talking about, um, um, uh, uh, like I said, lead, leaders, great leaders, create leaders. So in order to create leaders, you have to give personal attention to to the people you're grooming. Personal attention can be of anything. I uh, again, personal experiences. Um, the year, year when when the year starts, um, you have to talk about what your vision if if i'm the leader i'm asking my people what's your vision individual you want to go you want to attend to this seminar let's say i'm in a particular i'm in, i'm in tech i'm not in technology let's assume that you're in technology i'm i'm a technology leader what are the seminars that you like to attend this year what are the areas that you like to improve this year in terms of uh, information technology or the software side how how do you think you're going to manage to, i mean all these goals all these intentions all these visions of your people you got to talk about it and that's giving personal attention personal development you have to think about the personal development of your people we've again seen enough of this in our careers uh how much personal attention our leadership had uh, given us and how it affects us as employees, as uh, 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 how how it's gonna improve our skills, how it's gonna improve the atmosphere. If you feel like your leadership is concerned, if your leadership is is um, is extending opportunities to, for you to grow, how does it feel? Again, it's about building relationships, right? How how do you feel about the relationship between you um, and your leadership, and how it's gonna how the Feel the energy in that environment. Feel the feel, feel that energy and feel the motivation when that happens. And and uh, sometimes I've I, I've seen uh, uh, bosses coming or the, the the leadership the leaders come around on the floor and ask about you know, how you're doing today. You there are two kinds of I mean I see. It I see I see two things in there. Sometimes we have, we've seen even we ourselves ask that thing just for the sake of asking, how are you doing today? But have you seen some leaders asking that question with conviction? How are you doing today? I mean, really personal attention. I want to take uh, I want you to take a moment. Just think the leadership you've seen in your life asking that particular question with conviction. How do you feel? A leader coming to your desk, tapping your back. You don't have to do that. I'm just saying, just you know, coming to your desk and personal, giving your personal attention to you, 
really mean what he asked or she asked. How are you doing today? Versus someone who just walks by and say, hey, how are you doing today? And get back on whatever he's doing. So personal attention is personal attention. It's not just saying things for the sake of saying. And um, it could, again, we are talking about corporate environment, but it could even be in other situations. In a household, in a household, sometimes we think, okay, whoever takes the leadership, is it, is it, is it the man, is it the, is it the wife, is it the husband? Imagine how you feel, you know, whoever is taking charge on, on a particular decision-making project, let's say basement project, my wife did um, about a few months ago, right? I come down and ask, hey, honey, or whatever, um, how are you feeling today? Are you tired? You want to do some? You want this? You want coffee? You want tea? You want have some have some biscuits or something? <laughs> Imagine how it feels uh, when you're being asked something like that. We are not necessarily talking about leadership, but about relationship building. Take time to give personal attention. See how feel it. Feel the energy. Feel the atmosphere. Feel the motivation. And uh, you can apply these things into your life and your own situations. Again, guys, I want to remind, I cannot emphasize this enough. These are just basic things, right? These are basic things. We want to be your reminder service. Take time, take a step back and take time to remind yourself about these things and apply, execute. It doesn't mean anything. You take this into your head and you forget about this on Monday. No. Take a, take a piece of paper. I will stall some time if you like. Um, take a moment uh, to digest this. Take a moment to grab a piece of paper uh, and, and a pen and write them down and execute this. Important thing is executing, not just listening. Number four, positivity. We, we already talked about uh, a few things about positivity. Um, and I think uh, in my life, in my experience i've seen i've seen leadership being demoralized sometimes and see how it feels you if the leader is demoralized you are demoralized if you are demoralized you're bringing that into your how into your heart into your house and your entire household is demoralized but keep this in mind if you're a leader uh, keep keep this in your mind your people Whoever is around you, whoever is reporting up to you, they read your body language. They read your body language and it affects you because it's mostly it's about perspective when you're at a workplace or any kind of setup. It's about perspective because you don't, the other person doesn't know what's going on in your life. So it's about getting some perception. Oh, this person is this, this person uh, if something happens like this, this is the way that he reacts. No, it doesn't necessarily mean that. It could e it could easily have been something else that happened in the morning or last night that really affecting him or her to be this way. So because that the, we are in a world that people make perceptions. So it's really important that it's hard. This is hard. When get, we all know this is hard to be positive always. So it's, it's basically but, don't be judgmental, uh, right? Don't be judgmental. Absolutely. Uh, um, George, don't. It's hard, exactly, uh, because people are judgmental, and you cannot sometimes blame for that because, you know, because you don't. Sometimes it doesn't even sound nice to ask about things that are going on in someone else's life, right? People don't like that sometimes. So people be judgmental, but you cannot actually blame them for that. So because that it's hard, like I said, being positive always is hard. But try as much as you can because people read your body language and they make judgments. They, they judge you on that. Not that. You cannot blame them for doing that necessarily. But when you're a leader, you have to, you have to try hard to be positive. And sometimes uh, I've seen, I, even I've said this too, um, and uh, th this is when I, uh, I told you before, this is a two-way street. If your leadership is down, how do you inject energy into it? You can go and say, hey, we'll get through this together. Imagine how your boss or how your leadership responds to that. When your, gun, when your own people come and say, hey, buddy, hey, hey, together. I've done it myself and it did wonders. 
because sometimes the leadership is down. They don't expect your coach to get through this together. But then when you say that, when you go up to your leadership and say that, it builds confidence. It builds trust. It builds the energy in that atmosphere. And I have, again, this is about sharing our personal experiences uh, plus um, uh, it, it, famous examples, famous experiences, uh, examples. So we are, we are trying to blend all that together and share it with you. So uh, hoping that it will inspire you um, to become the best version of yourself. Um, so inject that positivity. It could either come from the employees reporting up to you or you can give that positive. But if you are the leader, your one of the main roles I feel is your body language is very important. So try to be uh, pr- try to be positive. And again, I like to take a very quick example from from World Cup winning Pakistan team in 1992. Imran Khan, the current prime minister, I respect him for that. He was down and out in his career. Um, he lost his mother in 1980s for cancer. He built a cancer hospital with positivity. Everyone turned him down. Everyone said that he cannot do this. Uh, uh, you cannot treat cancer patients for free. He did it. When can he did it? Uh, everyone said that he, Imran, it's impossible to build a cancer hospital to treat patients for free. He did it. Every, uh, in the 1992 World Cup, Cricket World Cup, Pakistan team lost three matches in a row. They were about to get kicked out from the preliminary round. And guess what happened in the end? Pakistan won the World Cup. Uh, if you talk to every every interview and, and team member interviews after that, they said the credit should go to none other than Imran Khan, the captain, then captain. He, they they all said they lost three matches in a row, and the positivity in, injected by Imran into the team really gave the energy to lift themselves up from where they were. And to fight as cornered tigers, that's the word that they used, cornered tigers. I want my team to fight like cornered tigers because here's the concept. If you are a cornered tigers, you cannot go anywhere else but to attack. That's the mindset that they were went and they went in and they won the World Cup. Um, and then again, everyone said, Imran, uh, being a f- third force in Pakistan politics, um, you cannot be the prime minister. And after 20 years of struggles, 20 years of hard work, he became the prime minister. Um, so he, he, he built a cancer hospital when everyone turned him down. Uh, uh, he won the World Cup when, when, when they couldn't win a single match in, uh, in, in the first three matches in the World Cup. And then he became the prime minister of Pakistan. After 20, 20 years, he didn't give up. All he did was energize, uh, inject positive energy, and he became the prime minister of Pakistan. Um, that's my famous example uh, that I want to share. Be inspired by these things and apply, execute this in your lives. Um, and the last thing is get to know your people. I think great leadership, uh, to me, this is my personal thought. When I, I like when your leadership knows not necessarily everything in your life. They don't have to learn everything. But when you know the things that you have to know you know what's going on. because you you want to put yourself in someone else's shoes to understand the uh, understand what they're going through and then see okay this is why it's happening we've seen enough examples online uh, enough uh, online if you if you read some of the linkedin uh, stories uh, if you are on linkedin you've seen how great leaders take the maximum from the employees because they got to know them. I, 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 I have a, a very simple but a f- kind of famous example from, from Damon Johns. Uh, I read this uh, from Damon Johns on LinkedIn. Damon Johns is one of the, uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the most successful businessmen in, in the United States, in the world. Um, he found this uh, young lady getting to work uh, late and it affects uh, uh, their business revenue basically uh, investments and he got to know her what's going on in her life uh, I don't I don't exactly remember what the real story but, but uh, the gist of the story is he was having some uh, family uh, I think he, she was a very young mom at that time so she had to take so she was a nursing mom and you know that's why she had to come late because she had to 
make sure that her kid is all right. You know, every, um, you know, the milk and the food and everything is uh, ready before she leaves. So that's why she's getting late. And that's why they're not getting. Uh, so their suppliers call this this lady. And she was in the supplies department, if I remember correctly. And uh, because she was not responding to these phone calls on time, Damon John, whatever the company, um, uh, implicated company there, they're losing business. Uh, do you think Damon Jones would, uh, unless he, he got to, unless he, uh, Damon Jones um, gets to know what's going on in this uh, lady's life, do you think um, he would ever uh, be able to get get back to where he wants to be, like in, in terms of the business revenue or whatever? Because he, he was, I think, if I, you know, I apologize for this, I don't remember the exact story, but I think he was, he was even considering letting her go or, or whoever, um, the, his, his peer, his co-owner or someone uh, wanted to let her go, but then either himself or someone else wanted to wanted him to go and talk to this lady and really understand uh, what was going on and what's the cause, what's causing her uh, to lose all these supplies. Um, sorry, orders. I, I'm sorry, the orders. And then he he took time out. He really talked. He talked. He, he took time out to talk to this person, talk to his employee, understood the problem. And uh, again, the uh, the story was uh, she she when she shared the story, there he adopted a flexible schedule, um, uh, and then uh, got the work done, and uh, business became successful. Just a very quick story uh, that you know I wanted to bring. If you want, you can actually Google that Damon Jones YouTube uh, inspiring stories, uh, whatever you know you can Google that. Uh, but real quick, you know, these are the five things I wanted to share today. Um, you know, the successful leadership uh, qualities and how it affects you as a person, how it helps you to become the best version of yourself, uh, and then um, how it affects your work atmosphere, work uh, work life. Uh, uh, um, success, atmosphere, energy, motivation, and keep it, keep them, keep, keep these things in your head, in your heart. Execute. That's the most important thing. Again, just take these things, these things you already know, um, and take this session as a, as a reminder service to yourself. Um, and I, I hope you learn something from these personal experiences and also from some of the famous examples uh, that I shared. Uh, when could will will share the videos that I I said uh, I'm gonna send you the Imran Khan uh, cornered tiger video too Venkat okay. so you can for viewers you can share that anything to add Venkat I'm sure you um, uh, you have um, you no, like, like run uh, down okay, those are great examples that you gave that those are good enough for anybody could fathom the you know the how how the leadership is play a great role right. Yeah. Don't don't think like leaders are just like the politicians or yeah. like you know just CEOs. They're not the only leaders. You lead your own life. You right. like you are the one responsible to blame if if you yeah. will. you are the one responsible to blame. So just just because you are not leading your so you could take all these things in your own life to lead yourself right. To lead yourself, just follow these uh, whatever um, the yeah. five points that we talked about. That Randy talked about. All these things, and then um, you know, I think that's all I have uh, to say. When get this, this is the last point. Um, there are so many. We just wanted to bring in five things that we felt like uh, sharing today. There are so many things that you can do. There are so many qualities of uh, great leaders, uh, but at least take uh, these five uh, and try to execute these things in your day-to-day -day life. Again, like I said, it could be in the corporate world, it could be anywhere else. Just a quick rundown. The think points we talked about is team success. Appreciate the good work right then and there. Personal attention and how it affects you as a person, you as a leader, you as an employee. Positivity, how it, how the, the, the injection of positivity um, uh, does wonders. I took the example of uh, Imran Khan. Uh, if you want to Google, please uh, feel free. And if you have any questions regarding any of that, including the game of uh, cricket, please uh, feel free to ask that question. And then uh, the last one is getting to know. So that's it from us uh, uh, for today. And until uh, next time, it's goodbye from me and Wenkat and from Living Life Coaches. Great. Uh, thank you, guys.